What's up guys, Andy here. Today I want to show you how to set up your DevOps with Shippable. So we're obviously going to be doing this with a Java application. We're going to be building a continuous integration pipeline, meaning that we're going to be committing our code to, in this case, GitHub, and that'll execute a webhook on Shippable that will build, test, and then send our application to an endpoint on Docker Hub so we can have a traceable artifact of the whole process and recreate that whole environment. And on top of that, we're going to get some pretty cool test reports and some advanced code coverage reports that I'm going to be using uh, via JCoco. And again, all of this is going to be integrated with GitHub and um, Docker Hub. Now, Shippable is a company, if you haven't gone to their website, uh, let me just show you that here, Shippable over here, uh, they got some really good documentation. They're an integration platform that allows you to integrate with all the tools that you really know out there, all your third party tools, all your uh, platforms, all your services, all the languages out there. So language in this case being Java, okay? And they do it in a de declarative fashion, setting up all this stuff. So we're gonna be using a shippable.yaml file. And as any YAML file, it's a well-structured document. So we're gonna be going through some of these um, tags if you will call them here and we'll see how we can declaratively set declaratively set up our uh, continuous integration pipeline and uh, actually push our uh, image to docker hub later on okay so all this you know documentation here goes through every single uh, portion of that yaml file but i'll be covering the pieces that we need for uh, this tutorial okay so first off we're going to be using a java fx application which is different than i guess a lot of the examples you see out there which are more web-based but it doesn't really matter because uh, most of it is all the same because what you got to do in your application now this, this missions java fx application is one that i've actually covered in other tutorials here so just to show you how it's supposed to look like right very simplistic just for demo sakes you click on a mission and you kind of get um, you know some some information on that mission over there and you got a little logger tab here okay so nothing there's no actually rocket science behind this okay this is just a simple JavaFX application the point is what if you were part of a group of people and uh, wanted to ship this application off to your customer and you really wanted to increase the quality of your application by continuously running it through tests and whether it be just unit tests or integration tests on top of that which we will both cover in this tutorial okay and then you know you can have a whole slew of other kind of tests afterwards but having those tests run every time you actually committed your code to github okay and then getting instant feedback on if anything wrong happened right so you could correct those mistakes on the spot without them going to the customer. So all this also being deployed, not, not deployed, but committed to Docker Hub or pushed to Docker Hub so that you can then recreate that environment as more and more features get added, you can actually go back to a point where specific feature sets are added. So it's, it is very cool. And what we're going to do here is I've already connected to GitHub. Okay, so this missions JavaFX application is actually on my GitHub account. So if we go to uh, my GitHub account here, uh, where are you, GitHub, over here, you'll see that I'm talking about this guy over here. And all the code has been committed. And there is my shippable.yaml uh, file, which once you uh, log in and connect this project with your shippable account and you enable this project shippable goes through here and it reads every section of this file to get the ball rolling so it's a standard way of doing this across all your applications i'm going to be going through this in a second hold on all right so there's no custom code you have to write it's very easy to get a project up and running in a continuous integration environment using shippable so i actually wrote a blog on this and i use this project here java shippable blog post demo and for those of you who have read that post and are coming here to for the more advanced stuff in terms of integration with docker hub that's actually what i'm going to what we'll talk about in this tutorial as well so first off in order to work uh with this tutorial you're going to need uh, eventually right if you want to if you want to roll with this you're going to need a shippable account right if you want to create your own project so in order to create your own shippable account you obviously have to go to shippable.com and once you're there you're going to see that a um 
the login page, actually, it's really easy. You'll either log in with your GitHub uh, account or your Bitbucket uh, account and information. And then all, all of a sudden, you're going to come here and you're going to be taken to, let's say, your dashboard. Now, your dashboard is not going to have this. Obviously, I, I've, I've created, I've kind of enabled three projects to work with. Uh, I've started with testing a whole bunch of stuff and then moved on to the blog stuff and moved on to this one here now, which you can see is at zero. We haven't actually committed any code. And so the build hasn't even been triggered yet. OK, so what's going to happen for you guys is when you're going to have your own uh, GitHub account, you're going to have to come to Shippable and uh, you're going to have to come to enable project. You have to explicitly enable it first. So you see these are all my projects on GitHub. And if you don't see your project up here, just click on the sync button up here and um, you will obviously then see your project pop up. OK, so then when that happens, you then have to say you click on this, enable a project, and then this will register that webhook to automatically read, you know, that YAML file once your code has been updated on GitHub. So it gets the whole build triggered and flows a whole bunch of sequential uh, commands that are going to be executed. And I'll talk about this in a second. OK, so going back to uh, NetBeans over here, the one important thing you have to remember is that at the root of your application, you have to have the shippable file. OK, so without that, that's not going to trigger anything on, on shippable side over there. So the other thing you might notice is I'm using a Docker file and that's because uh, I want this eventually to be pushed off to Docker. I'm going to be building the image with some artifacts uh, once everything passes. OK, once we have a successful build. And the other thing is, is once all this happens, we're going to have successful notification of the whole process by email. Now, by default, that's a feature that's turned on. OK, so what we're really going to concentrate on here is, you know, how do we get those test reports, those advanced uh, code coverage reports, which I'm using JCoco with and, you know, setting up the integration. This I already just showed you how to do it, right? You just enable the project. Boom, it's done, right? And the Docker Hub stuff, that's going to be where which is going to be a little bit more details. But again, all very declarative, all very in that one YAML file that we're going to check out right now. OK, so first of all, this is a very simplistic application. So if we go take a look at the uh, tests, all right, you'll notice that I just have one integration test and um, one unit test. It doesn't really matter if there's 100 or one. The point is, is that we want to see what's going to happen on shippable side. In fact, if you followed my blog, you'll notice that in this test package, I think I had like 47 uh, unit tests that I ran. And, and I think I just added at the end one integration test. So I'll actually take a look at the reports with you later on. Uh, but let's take an example uh, of simple example first, right? If we go take a look at that, you know, very simple standard application, uh, Java SE application that has a shippable.yaml file, you'll notice it's very simplistic. And, and that's a good thing to start off with, right? So the first thing you have to do for YAML and this YAML file, excuse me, is specify the language. Now, why is this? Now, what happens is shippable will spawn off a container for you. OK, they call those minions. OK, but what will happen is the, there's an agent on shippable that will build or, or give you a build machine. OK, so that build machine is going to have two cores, about four gigs of RAM just underneath that. And that machine, right, you get one, you basically get one minion, if you will. OK, so one minion for one build. So that's what, you know, it's free for it's free for uh, open source projects. So if you want to have like parallel builds, right, you're going to have to go invest, obviously, money into you know, uh, more minions. But in this case here, you get one minion for your free account using open source projects. So in this case, I have a public repository on GitHub. So that constitutes a uh, open source project. Hence, I get one minion and that minion spawns off a, basically a Docker container. So Shippable is all about Docker, right? It's been built with Docker at its core. So it's very scalable, very fast. And what's going to happen is with this language, Java, it's going to know what type of Docker container to spin off for you. And it'll run your application in that Java Docker container. OK, now here, this JDK here tag obviously allows you to say what kind of uh, version of Java that you want. So you can say, um, you know, open JDK 8, J uh, open JDK uh, 7. You can actually have multiple JDKs here and that constitutes something called a matrix, which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial, but you can come up with a matrix in which 
one build, right, on every minion, in this case we only have one minion because we're using the free version, is going to be run against every one uh, JDK distribution that we're going to specify here. Okay, so if we had four of them, there would be four different builds, and you actually would be able to see four, the four results for every build, okay, which is really nice. We're going to keep it simple here. So this would be using the default uh, Java Docker container that Shippable offers out of the box, okay? Um, so if you're not one that works with Docker containers, okay, you get one for free. If you want to override this and actually come up with your own Docker container, not a problem. I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? But this is just the first one. So <clears throat> this build section is actually what gets triggered eventually uh, when you're going to run your whole flow. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things in here, but this is the main one. This is your continuous integration tag, which will execute all these commands sequentially within your Docker build container. So what I'm saying here is I want to create these directories, okay, uh, shippable test results and shippable code coverage. Uh, why? The reason is, is because I want shippable to parse the JUnit test results so it can give me a really nice visualization of those and on top of that I also want the advanced code coverage reports so I'm also going to need shippable to eventually parse what's in this directory okay so a little bit of setup here to do in terms of you know getting what you want later on now here I'm running my maven install so maven install as you know it's going to run all the unit tests it's going to run all the integration tests it's going to package the application, okay? And the shippable retry is actually there in case, it'll try up to three times, we have some network issue where an artifact wasn't able to get downloaded, right? Some latency, some intermittent problem. So what'll happen is it'll try up to three times to download that, which is no problem. Once that's done and successful, what'll happen is that we're gonna copy the whole target directory recursively into that shippable code coverage uh, directory that we just covered. Now, the reason why is because jcoco, right? And I keep saying jcoco, right? Because in the palm.xml file, I've actually had the jcoco dependency, okay? Um, it'll actually create in the target directory, under the site directory, there's gonna be some, you know, jcoco stuff, but it's not enough to create the advanced reporting. So what Shippable requires is you copy the whole target directory over in here, and Shippable will then take care of generating, parsing all that advanced jcoco reporting okay you could also do it with um cobertura i don't even know if i, I don't know why i tend to pronounce it that way cobertura i can't even pronounce it the normal way but anyways so you know but the problem with um cobertura is um that i found that it doesn't work with java 8 lambda so the parsing is not working out very well and also it doesn't seem to be maintained uh, for a while so I actually went to jcoco to do this but you'll see it's really worth it because those visualizations that you get are really nice okay so this is all that you need once you commit your code right so let's say we come in here and uh, let's go to the project and uh, I want to uh, you know I change some code I commit well don't have to do in this case but what will happen I'll, I'll, I'll dry run it and then I'll actually run it with this one which is more advanced Okay, so then you come to your, uh, let's say we commit, the webhook will get um, executed, right? So if you go, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to dashboard. If you go to dashboard, you'll see that that's the blog one, right? And eventually, this, no, it's green because it already ran, but it would be, uh, in this case, gray, it'd be running. And well, once you click on it, right, you'll be brought to the console view, which is really cool because you can see in real time what's going on, all the phases, right, that are going on here. So you can see here the build CI corresponds to the CI section uh, that I had talked to you about in the YAML file, right? So it's doing all these things and you can dig down deeper and deeper and deeper. Maybe that one's not very interesting. These ones, are, these ones don't have much data in them. There you go. So over here, you can actually see all this stuff kind of happening. Now, this is a very verbose view. Uh, so what I recommend um, is that if you really need to look into the details of all of these is that you just download uh, the logs file and that'll allow you to you know, kind of search through it. And especially if there's been errors, I found that to be very, very useful. OK, so in this case here, you can see that it's just it's just really, 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 really long. OK, so the point being, though, is that after everything is green, 
you can see here you got your all past code coverage your sequence uh, you can have a little matrix values in this case we only tested against the Oracle JDK 8 but if there were more you would see more you can see here you get your test results okay so in this case here we see in this project I had 47 tests right so they all passed which is cool and then we can look at the code coverage reports so this gets a little bit more involved here but that's just the same information that I've written here but you can actually go in here now and and start clicking on your code coverage reports to see the percentages that have been covered okay and there's also a show details button which this is more of the advanced um, JCoco uh, reporting here so you can actually break it down and see you know by instruction by branch by line by class and all this kind of stuff and you can even break it down further by source files and stuff so it's very very cool to have this every time you make a commit on your github account or any other account right it could be bitbucket can be uh, GitLabs, doesn't matter um, then you'll get this kind of reporting once you have the things i just showed you in place okay so that's pretty cool now there's a history and everything to this too so um, it, I've only you know done this once for this project but if you had like you can have like 10 of them in here and you can go take a look at the history of that and you also have the commit the git commit number here the checksum number so you can actually click on this and you can go back to what you know files were part of this commit and you can actually um, you know troubleshoot any issues that would have caused this to become red okay so if you want to go here up there you go to your account and you'll see uh, basically uh, everything that's on your dashboard here so you can see here I was playing around this test I ran it 17 times if we go look at the um, test 2 here you'll actually see that I can go through the history and by going through the history you can see that some of these didn't go very well okay so if you just pick this one let's say we can actually, um, oh, I went back to that. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to click on the history. Uh, let's go back here. Excuse moi. We'll go to the history and then we'll go back to a red one. We'll click on the red one. There you go. And you'll see how it looks like, you know, obviously red there, red there. You'll also get an email and you can actually see here. I had a, a section called post CI. Uh, and if you go in here, you can actually I see I was trying to build a Docker container. And didn't work out there and the reason why it didn't work out and if we take a look at the error message it says there's no such file or directory so I have to you know kind of scratch my head figure things out do some more research so you have an actual history of, of what's going on there which is nice and you can you know eventually delete the history and all that kind of stuff like for this case here this test 2 project I'm eventually going to delete it but I decided to keep it for the for the for the tutorial because I want to show you how it looked like when things went bad okay so that's that's the blog one I that I kept there uh, specifically because well obviously I wrote the blog but to show you the advanced coverage reports they're they're a lot more um, involved than the ones we're gonna show for the Java FX uh, project just because I only have like I said one unit test and uh, one integration test right so we're not gonna see 47 and see a lot of data in our coverage reports but I wanted to show you this it's very important you understand this before we we, we kind of delve into uh, you know dive into the more um, verbose uh, YAML file over here so obviously we're gonna be needing this in the next one now this and this might change a little bit but I kept it uh, in the next um, example just so you can find some common ground so the project like I said just a JavaFX project we come here we take a look at our uh, shippable let me close this blog post one so I don't get mixed up shippable one open it up now again I kept it here but in effect if you're using your own docker container right you're bringing your own docker image let's say to the party you don't actually have to say you know Java here you would actually put none because we're not using their default container, right? Their image uh, to run in the minion, we're gonna be using ours. The other thing is you'll notice I have a cache. Now you can imagine every time you make a code commit, what would happen, right? If you didn't have a cache, you would have to download those dependencies every single time, which is a huge pain. So here I'm enabling caching, but if you put caching just just like that cache equals true it'll cache the whole build directory right and I actually want to just cache right now the uh, dot m2 
uh, repository, the Maven repository, which is owned by root. Okay, so you can actually have a list of these directories to just cache. So I don't want to, you know, run into uh, trying to cache too much and then it, 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 it shoots me in the foot, right? So I just want to try this for the M2. It's been working out really well for me. Now, this is where this is the pre, uh, you know, continuous integration boot. This is used if ever you want to override any uh, default Docker image or customize uh, the startup of the built container. Okay, so in this case here, I'm actually going and I'm downloading an image that's available on Docker Hub, right? The JavaFX uh, image here, which allow me to run uh, the JavaFX application that I want because it has some dependencies, uh, you know, to, to, to visualize that for the libraries of JavaFX, okay? Which are a little bit different than the one that would have been provided by default. So it wouldn't have worked. I want the latest one, that's the tag. Now pull equals true. You say, well, of course you want to pull it, right? But in this case here, you want to pull it because you're not building it yourself. You're not doing build, you know, docker build minus T. If you're doing build uh, docker build minus T, then you would do it in another section that is not in here. The section is actually called PRE underscore CI, okay? And since I'm not building it myself, I mean, it's already available here. That's why I'm saying build equals true. If I was building it myself in another section called pre underscore CI, I would actually, you know, say pull equals false when I would be mentoring the image name. Okay, so if you guys are a little bit confused about that, uh, you can definitely hit me up on the comment section below. My goal is not to include too much information in this tutorial, too many sections to kind of have you guys go cockeyed here. Okay, so in this case, just know that I'm using a pre-existing image available on Docker Hub, specifically tailored for JavaFX, and I'm just pulling it there. I'm not building it myself. It's already built and waiting for me. Okay, pull it in. So obviously, that's going to take a little bit of time to do, especially the first time you do this. Okay, now. Now I am in my container, right? The container is uh, booted up, right? The minions booted up my Docker container image. And now I want to execute these commands sequentially in there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go and get uh, my Maven, in this case, 3.5.0 version. And I want to unpack it. And I just want to make sure it's available on the path, okay? Now, there's, there's a couple of ways to do this, right? You could have built your own image and put this in that image and then you know pull it from your account or I decided to do it like this to show you guys that these are commands that you can actually execute within the container and customize it okay for your needs in this case maybe you don't want to build your own container and put it on your you know docker hub account or something maybe you just found the one that you like and you want to add some stuff to it just like I did over here okay but that is another option now here you should recognize this, right? We did this in the other shippable.yaml file. We're just, you know, we're prepping up for those reports. We're prepping up for those advanced code coverage reports. Everything is being done here just like it was before. Now what's different is this line. We're also creating a build output directory. And why I'm doing this is because hopefully now I've committed my code, you know, the whole thing has been built. All the tests have passed, the, the unit test, the integration test. I have an artifact that is, um, you know, um, valuable enough now to push onto Docker Hub. So what I want to do is push that artifact out to this build output directory that shippable um, puts everything in there, right? So there's an environment and variable called shippable build directory. And under there, there's the target. And that's where my artifact is, you know, my jar file that's automatically, uh, you know, built for me via the Maven clean install. And what I want to do is I want to copy everything in that target directory. I don't want to kind of miss out on everything, just copy a jar file. I just want to copy everything and put it in that build directory that I just put out. Now, now that that image, right, that I've downloaded and I put Maven in there also has my jar, everything is in there now. And what's going to happen is, in the post CI section, right? I'm actually gonna build myself this um, Docker image, right? So I'm, I'm using the same one as, uh, you know, not the same one, but I'm, I'm, the JavaFX missions image is now being built and it's going to include this build output. You're basically doing like a commit on it, which all the artifacts that were generated, in this case, just a jar file, is gonna be pushed onto 
this Docker image. Okay, so this is obviously the MVP Java uh, username, and this is the name of the image, and I'm just gonna use latest for now. There's much better ways to do this, but for the tutorial, I just wanna keep it simple. And then I'm gonna push it. So I build it, and then I push it. And by building it, like I said, I'm including whatever is in this build output directory. So I have my jars. It's kinda like doing like a copy, you know, copy the jar over here. And now what's gonna happen is, it's gonna push it, but it doesn't just push it magically. You have to set up something called an integration. Okay. Now, in order to set up an integration, you have to set this up first in Shippable, and then use this name that Shippable that you register with Shippable in this file. So let's go. Let's go take a look at that now. Okay. So if I go here to Shippable, and I believe here it's account settings. Bear with me because I, I haven't done this in a couple of days. I can't remember exactly where it is anymore. There you go. Integrations integrations you would actually now you see here i have a github integration a docker hub integration now you guys would come in here and say you know i want to add an integration and you look at all these things you could integrate with i mean it's just ridiculous these guys these guys have it all i mean you could even integrate with jenkins i was actually talking about this in my blog i was saying you know you can use shippable to you know uh, replace what you've been doing with jenkins because you know setting up with jenkins as a developer you know it takes time to configure to get to know it um, it's kind of a pain. It slows you down on getting, you know, all those features that you want in your code base. You're kind of playing administrator a little bit. You don't really want to play that. So this is really where, you know, shippable shines, but it just integrates with everything. It, your, your pipelines are just very well streamlined and automated. They, they did a fantastic job. So once you've set this up, okay, you look for your, your Docker, and then you just, uh, you know, you add the information in there. Obviously, they're going to come up with like a form that you add everything in there. So, you know, you're going to have your, your username, your password, your uh, email, all that kind of stuff. But this is the important part, right? Docker Hub. So Docker Hub is actually what you're going to put in, in this guy here, right? So integrations hub. Now you're connected. Now you're going to be able to push this guy to Docker Hub. Now the type in this case is Docker. There's other... Um, you know, there's other types out there for, uh, you know, pushing uh, containers out there. Now, the notifications, pretty cool. Uh, by default, it's on. You'll get a notification for, let's say, your uh, if the bill goes bad, obviously. And then if it goes back to being good, you'll also get an email, right? So you're back on track email. But if the build is like good every time after that, you're not going to get a notification. That's the default. So there are ways to configure that. And for now, I'm just putting, you know, kind of a placeholder there. You put your own email down there. I don't want you guys to use this code <laughs> by accident. You know, email me all your bills, right? So um, love you, but, you know, I don't want to have uh, all your emails sent to me. So, okay. So with this now, we can definitely get an end-to-end -end pipeline going where uh, we can get, actually, if we can get a visualization of this on uh uh, on here, uh, pipelines here, you can actually get a visualization of how this is actually going on. Mine should be pretty simplistic here. There's not much going on. There you go. You see how I have a, had a couple of them going on here. I got I got the blog one going to this guy, and uh, my other one hasn't been. Oh, I can even minimize the maximize. That's nice. So the other one hasn't been uh, visualized yet because. I kind of screwed things up a little bit. I did a rename of a repository and it didn't really like that. So there's some things that are still yet to be synced. It'll probably take a probably take another day to sync that data up properly. But doesn't matter. So over here in the projects, let's say we wanted to actually uh, commit something, right? I don't know. Let's just go in here and um, go into the source. And um, let's say we want to, let's say we just want to add like a little extra thing in the log over here. So, you know, accessibility chief mission info uh, for, and then let's just let's say, uh, I'm just going to put this successfully. Uh, I don't I don't know what to do, guys. Uh, I don't know. We'll just put the number two here, <laughs> okay? Just to prove to you that this is actually going to go all around the, the, the CI circle. So if I play this, obviously here, um, should see that pop up over here. There it goes at two. It didn't even do a good job. It didn't even leave a space. I'm awful. Okay, but um, if I actually take do this in um, the image, I have an image I've already downloaded, 
And if I want to execute it, I'm executing it through a script here to automate everything. If we take a look at that, let's see here. Uh, if I do this, you'll notice that it's not there, right? So I got like an old version uh, of it here. So if I say Docker images, right? I got a whole bunch of stuff here, but here, here's one. Here's the latest one I just got about an hour ago, right? So uh, this is the one we're gonna be pushing. Okay, so that's fine. And um, let me just clear this screen over here. So we'll go around the circle. Let's, let's, let's try this out. This is gonna be pretty cool. So obviously I wanna commit. So this is a cool little uh, plugin for NetBeans for, for GitHub, right? So there's modified that. So let's just say uh, live. Well, it's not live, but you know, for me right now, it's live. So I'll commit this. And uh, there you go, done. And then over here, I wanna actually uh, push this. I think it's this one over here, because now I have to minimize my screen here. There you go. Push this over here to my repository. So this is the one over here that we just saw. Okay, I'm good to go. Next. Push, 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 let's go, right? Master, finish, finito, let's do it. Let's go take a look now what's going on in the background. This is all happening for us, right? I'm not doing anything now, right? Now it's up to uh, shippable, right? So if I go back here now to my account, boom, you see this guy? He's already good to go. Look, live demo test. I can actually go back to the commit on GitHub. I'm golden here. So this guy is, what's going on now? If I just click on him, right? It's gonna give me a live view of what's going on, which is really cool. So you see here, I'm, it's provisioning the job notes. So again, there's an agent that's looking for a build machine for me. So that build machine, like I was saying before, two cores, about four gigs of RAM, right? Once that uh, machine is available, it's gonna start uh, reading my YAML file, right? To trigger that build and it'll see, hey, this guy doesn't want our default uh, Docker Jav image. He's provided one to pull from Docker Hub. Let's go get that. Then it's gonna go through all the steps. So you can actually, you know, if you really wanna know what's going on, you can click on the info. Right now, not much is going on, but you'll see soon that this thing is just going to start rolling around and the whole point is you know right now for a tutorial sake yeah you're kind of maybe interested in seeing what's going on but in real life eventually you're just going to let this thing go in the background if something goes wrong you'll get an email so let's wait for this guy to actually finish and then i'll show you um you know what's going on all right so that actually took pretty long because it was the first time that it was done there was no caching really involved because I had um, kind of deleted the history and stuff like that and then the rename. Uh, so um, you can actually see it's, uh, oh, that's the, that's the git command. I thought I was still referring to test as the name that I had before. Okay, so notice here, again, we got the code coverage there. Sequence coverage is a lot lower than the other one. There are matrix, there's no matrix. I'm using the open JDK8 this time due to that image that I pulled from um, Docker Hub. It's using the open JDK, that's why. Now you can take a look at all these ones uh, and you can look at the fact that this one took the bulk of the time. And if you go down there, uh, you can see that it's actually, you know, going off and getting a whole bunch of stuff um, online. So, you know, that's that's one of the reasons why it's, um, you can see here, HTTPS and stuff like that. It's booting the container, taking a little bit of time. This one here uh, took a little bit of time too right because i'm actually getting uh maven and all that kind of stuff so you can actually go in here and uh follow through all the points over here so our post right our post ci remember i said that we were building our own container so you can actually see that it was successfully built you can actually see that it took the right name of the jar in the right location notice target here and that's because i put everything in the target directory um, before I put it in the build output directory. So remember that um, just to jog your memory in the uh, YAML file, right? I said that I wanted to put that, uh, create that build directory and put everything from the target directory in the build directory. And that's how I was able to find it. So what you got to do in this case too, and it's very important, 
in this case, I could only get it to work if uh, my Docker file, again, which is at the root of my uh, project, actually specified that directory. Now, <clears throat> I'm not too crazy about that. Um, I'd have to say there's probably a better way. There must be a better way to do this. I actually came across some information on their site but it wasn't very clear to me how to bypass not putting that environmental variable or that hard-coded path rather out there. So it seems to be at this point kind of a customized Docker file with working with Shippable. Hopefully there's another way around doing that. If you do know of another way of doing that, please share your information uh, in the comments below. So what kind of is a little bit ugly here is you kind of have uh, the Docker file with that there. That's that's pretty one of the downsides right now that I see, uh, you know, by by pushing it out to Docker Hub. But if you're using this as your you know your overall platform, uh, shippable, then you know there, there's no there's no problem. But you know it could be a little bit less transparent on that end. I, I would like it to be so. There probably is a way to do it. I just I just haven't seen it. Um, so. Yeah, so everything is green, right? We're, we're good, guys. So now we can take a look at our tests. Again, there should be just like one there, right? Yeah, just one lonely little test. We got our, still we get our, our coverage reports, right? So we can see here, you know, going through all the controllers. Now nothing's been, you can see 0%, 0%, 0%, 0% and, that's, and that's normal because I've only had, I only did one and that was in the services package, right? So you see here 50% with that uh, in terms of branch coverage and 100% in terms of sequence coverage. And again, I can go look at my advanced reports, my JCOCO reports. So all of that is still there. Nice thing is too, is you can download uh, the uh, job coverage reports and that's why you see this, this kind of thing here because I had done that before but canceled out. And this is just a pleasure here. Now uh, let's move over to Docker Hub, right? So if you go to Docker Hub and we go back to the MVP uh, repository, you should have a you see my uh, images here. There's this one here. This is the one we just pushed out. So JavaFX missions, click on that. And you'll see that this was done like 10 minutes ago, right? So we're gonna actually do the Docker pull and go take a look at that new version of software that we have with the number two in the, um, in the log uh, message, okay? So if we go into my um, console view here, I just want to show you that script that I'm actually uh, executing. I just don't want to do this on the command line because it's just a little bit long, right? So I'll just show you how that script looks like. It's basically just, you know, X host plus, and then it's using the Docker, uh, Docker command. We want to remove this when we're done, run it in the background. I'm, you know, uh, mapping my display. All this kind of stuff I, I uh, explained in how to set up your developer environment in Docker. Okay, everything has been explained in that tutorial. All these, all these over here. Now, this is the one I'm going on the MVP Java um, repository, right, on Docker Hub, and I'm getting the one we just pushed out. Okay, so by just executing this script, it'll pull it for me. It'll pull the newest version. It'll see, hey, there's a new version there, right? It'll go start X. Can you just got it, right? So I do this. I uh, didn't go get it. It's probably it's probably caching it. That's the problem. Let me let me actually uh, remove the caching. No, actually, what I have to do is um, I have to go and actually pull this myself. So let me go here <clears throat> and uh, do this, and it'll it'll see that it has changed, and then I'll go get. Now most of the stuff already exists, there, so it won't take much time at all. I just have to download basically. Yeah, the, the app, almost the application itself is just different on that file system. So it'll go do that, and then we'll be able to run the script and easily see the, the new changes that have been um, propagated with that commit. All right, sweet. So we got it. Now we can execute the script that just does the whole thing for us. And boom, shows up. Click on this guy, you should see the number two there. And there we go, guys. You see how that went all around the CI pipeline, and we had an endpoint that went and pushed the image right onto Docker Hub. Now, we could make this better, because you know now I don't really have an inventory of like one push versus another, right? What if I wanted to go to the previous version kind of thing? Well, this kind of is a very uh, important requirement. And so what you would have to do in your, um, 
in your YAML file here, in your shippable.yaml, instead of using latest, you can actually use some environmental variables that have been set up by shippable. So let me show you here, uh, there's a whole whack load of them. Um, if you go into this here, this link over here, uh, shippable.docs and then environmental variables, or just Google it, it'll be the first hit. You'll see you got a whole bunch of standard variables that you can use with a dollar sign in front. So let's say I use dollar sign build number or dollar sign commit. Uh, there's dollar sign timestamp. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can put in your YAML file, right? So let's go back here. So what I'm saying is here, instead, you would say something like dollar sign build, oops, build dot, and then you would say dollar sign commit, and then you just build whatever tag that you want so that the next time you uh, actually push the Docker Hub, you'll get more of a um, you know release version associated with that docker image so then you could cycle through them and say oh i want that one that one was associated with you know whatever you can put the version number in here too so there's a whole bunch of ways you can go about doing this and you know that's why i wanted to show you that you know that web page here has a whole bunch of environmental variables that you can use okay to to reproduce whatever environment and relate it to whatever git commit okay now here you also have travis if you've ever used travis uh, what will happen is shippable, if it sees a Travis.yaml file, will actually even try to read that if it doesn't see your shippable one. So it's pretty cool. I think it's an absolutely amazing um, framework, not a framework, but platform, okay? And it's free <laughs> for open source projects, right? Just doing this tutorial didn't cost me a thing. If I wanted to do this tutorial with Jenkins, forget about it. I mean, I would have had to configure a whole bunch of stuff, drove myself crazy. And on top of that, it would have been online because if I wanted a Jenkins server online, I would have to pay money, right? Just to do a tutorial. So, you know, that wasn't in my plan. So once I found Shippable, I was all over it and I'm super happy with it. And you just saw how to build a continuous integration pipeline super easily with Shippable. Let me know what you guys think. Give it a shot. And um, until next time, I'll be getting the next one ready. Ciao, guys.